In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, teach and urge these things. Whoever teaches something different and does not agree with this, sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the religious teachings is conceited, understanding nothing, and has morbid disposition for arguments and verbal disputes. From these come envy, rivalry, insults, evil suspicions, and mutual friction among people with corrupted minds who are deprived of the truth supposing religion to be a means of gain. <clears throat> Indeed, religion with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, just as we shall not be able to take anything out of it. If we have food and clothing, we shall be content with that. Those who want to be rich are falling into temptation and into a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires, which plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils. And some people, in their desire for it, have strayed from the faith, and have pierced themselves with many pains. But you, man of God, avoid all this. Instead, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Why should I fear in evil days, when my wicked ensnarers ring me round? They trust in their wealth. The abundance of their riches is their boast. Blessed, Blessed the, the poor, poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Yet in no way can a man redeem himself or pay his own ransom to God. Too high is the price to redeem one's life, and he would never have enough to remain alive always and not see destruction. Blessed is the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Fear not when a man grows rich, when the wealth of his house becomes great, for when he dies, he shall take none of it, his wealth shall not follow him down. Blessed is the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Though in his lifetime he counted himself blessed, they will praise you for doing well for yourself. He shall join the circle of his forebearers, who shall never more see light. Blessed, Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Please stand. Alleluia. 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 Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. 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 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve, and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod steward Chusa, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> Jesus proclaiming the goodness of the kingdom of God. And then it says he was accompanied by the 12, in other words, the 12 apostles, and women who served them and provided for them. It's very important that St. Luke mentions that. The proclamation of the kingdom first was entrusted by the Lord to the apostles. Go, he said, you know, when he sent the 12. Go proclaim the kingdom of God. Tell people about God. Tell people about me. Tell people about the kingdom of God, about eternal life, about the values and teachings of God. But eventually he sent everyone. But today, in a very special way, the mention of the women is very important. Again, probably that in that culture, in that context, during the time, uh, you know, the role of women was really downgraded in a way. Like they were largely very insignificant. Most of the things performed for, you know, um, the people were mostly performed by men. And yet today, St. Luke specifically mentions that. Why? I think for two reasons. First, to show that the Lord Jesus was not embarrassed and was not uncomfortable working with women. He recognized the fact that, well, yes, he was performing his ministry. He was proclaiming the kingdom of God, but he also needed the help and assistance of many people, including women. Otherwise, he would have said, no, 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 if, if Mary Magdalene, and remember, the gospel today says all those women were, you know, he cured them of evil possessions or evil spirits. In other words, they were probably have dealing with some issues in lives. And yet, the transformation that the presence of the Lord caused in the lives, in the lives of these women, led them to that service offering their resources and their lives in the service of God. It's a very important point that St. Luke is giving us. How Christ has transformed them and how that transformation has led them towards service of God. You know, when we're in church, we always talk about ministry and when we talk about ministry, we don't simply talk about the priests and bishops and deacons and nuns and brothers. In the church, when we talk about ministry, we talk about ourselves. And when we talk about our ministry, we always say our ministry is rooted in the fact that we are all part of this church. And that when we were baptized, we were all given these gifts by the Holy Spirit. And the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us, those are the same gifts that we use in the service of others. And so when we talk about ministries and when we talk about gifts, we do not talk about comparison. Who is higher, who is lower, who has, you know, a better position. In, in church, ministry is not compared according to ranks or status. We simply recognize diversity of ministries. 
We don't say, I, I cannot say that since I am a priest, my ministry is higher than yours. No. Rather, I would say, my ministry is different from yours. It doesn't make my ministry higher. It doesn't make your ministry of caring for your family lower than my ministry of celebrating the Mass. We have different ministries. But the most important thing is to recognize that we are gifted by the Holy Spirit and that we use our gifts to minister to others. And this is precisely why I think St. Luke has to mention the role of women. Because in the church, all ministries cannot be performed by one person. All ministries in the church cannot be performed by Pope Francis or by me. But rather, all of us perform that ministry. In fact, for example, when we talk about a catechism, I mentioned the other day, just last weekend, we celebrated Catechetical Sunday. I cannot catechize everyone. All of us, the priests here, we cannot do that. I mean, we probably can, but it will take forever. That is why we rely on volunteer catechists. That shared ministry. I, cannot, I will not say I am a better catechist, you know, because I'm a priest. All of us are catechists. All of us are capable of doing that. Outreach, the Paris outreach. You know, who was stuck? Uh, all the supplies there, canned goods, uh, noodles, uh, pasta, and not us, you. That's ministry, that's shared ministry. That's recognition that there are many things that we can do because we work together. Like even when, you know, the celebration of this Mass, you know, when I come here for Mass, everything is ready. I did not prepare everything. You know, somebody else are doing their job. Uh, so that when I come in, I put on the vestments, I celebrate Mass, the whole church, the whole chapel is ready. Why? Shared ministry. This is what we, talk, what we talk about when we say in the church, ministry is not competition. Ministry is not about differences, you know, in terms of ranks and status. Rather, it's simply a recognition of the diversity of the gifts that we have received. And therefore, because of the diversity of the gifts that we receive, we have diversity of ministries, diversity of roles that we perform in the church. There is no lesser ministry and lesser service. In other words, um, your ministry, whatever you do, when you care for your family or when you volunteer in church, that ministry is not something lesser than those who uh, give communion, than those who are you know, performing other tasks. We are all doing the same job. So today, I think that that is the challenge of the gospel we have today. Christ proclaimed the gospel. And he was accompanied by the twelve and some women. Christ was performing his job, but he also recognized the role and contribution of those whom he sent. And we are those, the apostles, the disciples the women who recognize our giftedness and because we recognize our giftedness, we recognize also our role, our responsibility that goes with the gifts, that we are willing to place ourselves in the service of the church because God has given us so much. As we always say, we are too gifted to give because God has given us, we are too gifted to be able to give. God showed his love by sending us his son. Let us now trust that love that we present him with the needs of our suffering world. We pray for all members of the church. May the Holy Spirit help us make a joyful and fruitful witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for all who are elected to government. May God's justice be in their hearts as they make decisions in the best interests of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sick, especially those in hospice care. May they find strength in God's loving care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
We pray for our beloved dead. May they enjoy the fullness of eternal life with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Today we pray in a very special way for Bernadette McCaffrey, Lucy Bartolucci, for Maximo and Faustina de Leon. From this Mass offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And also we pray in a very special way today. Uh, yesterday there was this uh, tragic accident involving some of you know, the farming little school band, uh, children, uh, for those celebrating this Eucharist with us all over the world, uh, Farmingdale is, is, a, is a village, it's a town um, bordering where this church, this parish is. And many of those children, you know, uh, who were in that uh, incident, their family are our parishioners. So um, some of the kids are in, um, a few are in critical condition. Um, thanks God, not uh, at this point, um, most are okay. But some are in uh, critical condition, so we pray for them. And there, you know, I think two uh, kind of unfortunately perished in the incident uh, a volunteer teacher and another one. Um, it happened on their way, uh, they were on their way to a school band uh, competition or uh, event in Pennsylvania. Or, um, so we pray for them. We pray for the family. Uh, we pray for the family who lost a loved one uh, in this uh, tragic incident. We pray for uh, all those um, children who are in critical condition. We pray for all those who are safe. Um, we can just imagine the trauma that uh, the experience and the anxiety of the parents. Uh, you, you parents know exactly, you know, that, that fear. Uh, every time your children leave your house, wherever they go, to school or wherever they go, there's always that constant fear of, you know, um, what will happen to your children. And this is one of the worst nightmares any, any parent could ever have. So we remember them in a very special way today. Uh, may the Lord uh, be their source of strength and consolation in this very difficult and trying times of their lives. And for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers in gratitude for all you have done. Hear them and answer, them, answer us. We ask this through Christ, O Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us a bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, Let us not pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand, the grace and glory of the name, for our good and the Spirit. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each one is offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you holy people stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the twofold, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ and be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teachings, we dare to sing. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, for every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with you. and let us offer to other the sign of Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes over the sins of the world, bless the loose cult at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. 
Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspire with this confidence, we fly to thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not thy petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer them. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, have a beautiful day. Thank you.